Hey everybody, hey, it's Lee Godbold with Junk Removal Authority where we help junk removal business owners make more money and live a better life. If you guys are looking for digital marketing services for the junk removal industry for your junk removal company, if you're looking to get in business, maybe you've been researching franchises and other things on so starting a junk removal business, we've got a great franchise alternative. A lot less expensive than buying a franchise. A lot more flexibility. There's not really a whole lot of restrictions. And uh, it's just a great way of going about it. We've had a lot of people go through that class over the years, the vast majority of which have been very, very successful in the junk removal business. So check us out at junkra.com. What a, today, let's discuss what to expect from your digital marketing agency and how quickly stuff might work. Can you expect the same results as others that have maybe left testimonials or reviews for the marketing agency? How much communication is needed? and how big of a role that the mar digital marketing agency plays in the success of your company. Some of the talks I wanna kinda of go over. So one of the things that we do, and a lot of marketing agencies do, is we put out success videos and we put out testimonials and customer reviews and all like that from people that have had a lot of success with our marketing program. And those, the ones we put out, the one other marketing agencies put out and all, those reviews come out either it was one of the rare cases where everything was super super smooth and worked really really well right from the beginning or they're put out after a period of time after you know maybe things didn't start out great and it just took a while to kind of get things tweaked to where the results were good we're not going to put out testimonial reviews and all like that when things aren't great much like on your social media, most people aren't gonna post about the bad things that happen in their life. They're gonna post about the cool places they go and the new car they buy and when they get a new job, when their kids are born. You know, when everything's going well, you get the greatest hits on social media. And it's the same with business stuff. With As a business, business in terms of reviews and all, digital marketing agencies aren't gonna put information out on people that struggle. Um, simply not going to do that. So they are th that information is relevant. And in the case of JRA stuff, like if you're with us for a long enough period of time, 95% of the time, probably more than that, 99% of the time, really, like we're going to get you or 95, 99, somewhere there, uh, a high number. Like we're going to get it to the point where things are running really, really well. Now, there are certain things that you've got to do to allow your digital marketing agency to be successful. One of the very first things is you've got to be willing to communicate as the business owner. So a lot of times when things get bad, especially, you might hear that your marketing agency doesn't communicate with you. And there's a lot of marketing agencies out there that don't. And there's times we might have dropped the ball and not communicated when we need to. When that pops up though, if you're worried about communication, you're worried about results, or especially if you're worried about communication but the results are still okay, like if they're not meeting your expectations on communication, let them know about it. Let whoever your contact is know about it. Hey, you know, I wanna speak more often. Now, communication takes time and it's an expense for a marketing agency to provide. So, most agencies are going to say you get X amount of support. And in the case of JRA, the way we've approached it up to this point is we'll give you the amount of support that's necessary that you kind of want. And that's how we've done it. And most of the time it works out very well. So when you first launch a campaign, if the campaign or a time where the campaign's not doing great, like we want to communicate with you as much as possible, let you know what we're doing, things we're changing, the things we're trying and kind of what we hope to see. Um, now, when things start running a lot better, we might go from weekly or maybe multiple time a week communication down to uh, bi-weekly. If things are running super smooth and you don't want to speak more than once a month, which we have a lot of clients, it's like, hey, give me, give me regular statistics and once a month, let's uh, go over them and that's all they want. So we work together on communication. Some agencies, all they do is email support, they won't do phone support. Uh, as long, 
I think some phone support or video calls needs to be a thing, but email support is a very effective way to communicate with your marketing agency because it allows you to really get your thoughts together and put them down, and it creates a record for both individuals, and it generally winds up using up a lot less time than a conversation. So uh, there's regular email communication, like most of your communication being on emails, I think ideal with regularly weekly or monthly calls uh, kind of you know mixed in there and then as, as soon as the campaign starts struggling again get on the phone and uh, that way we can get feedback from your agency get feedback from you as the customer and you can provide feedback and all like that but if you're worried about something communicate much like in a marriage which the relationship you have if it's with a good reputable digital marketing agency that cares about you should be much like a marriage where the two of y'all are going to work together and work through through things and explore every option to work through things before you cut ties. It's very difficult to find a good marketing agency that gets good results that you like working with and you believe has your best interests at heart. And from time to time, if there's issues, a lot of times it's best to work it out with the company you're currently with than to jump ship. And this goes if you're working with JRA and looking to go to somebody else, or if you're working with somebody else looking to go to JRA. Like before, I don't want clients that just jump ship as soon as the um, results get worse uh, from anybody. So, you know, I don't want them having been with a company a month or two and not having gotten the immediate results they want and think they're gonna come right over to JRA and it'd be a extremely good um, if they're with an agency that's got some proven results and all that kind of stuff. Now, if you're with an agency that is, is super cheap, that doesn't have a great reputation, that maybe isn't doing the right things, then jumping over is going to make a huge difference. But there's, there's three or four digital marketing agencies out there in the junk removal space right now that's kind of specialize in junk removal that are pretty good. Um, I think we're better. I think, you know, the stuff we bring to the table and the level of service we've got, I think our websites are definitely better. And on the ads platform, you know, I think we get a little bit better results too. But you're, you're not going to switch from them to us after just a month or two and it be a ton better. It's just not going to happen. So you got to be a bit more patient. Approach, if you, you take a little time to hire your agency, when you hire them, uh, when you make that hire, you want to you want to plan to stick with them for at least three months. I'd rather see six months. So here's what happens. Let's say you start out with a Google Ads budget of $150 a day. And in three weeks' time, things aren't working great. Maybe cost for conversions are high. Maybe the phone's not really ringing a lot and you're spending this money and you're worried about being able to meet business obligations. Go ahead and let the agency know and, you know, see if we can in decrease that spend before you run out of cash. Like you have to communicate. You got to let them know what you're seeing to help them best manage the account. Even if they don't ask, give them the information. Hey, this week was a great week. This week, this week sucked. I'm really worried about profitability now. We're losing a lot of cash. Like, provide that information over. And then what they need to do is hopefully present some sort of plan or an explanation of what they are going to do or an explanation of why, hey, let's not do anything yet. Let's give it a little bit more time. That's what you need. You need good communication, much like a marriage with your digital marketing agency. You need to make a commitment. You made a decision here to go with them. You don't want to be wrong on that decision. So it's much like when you hire an employee, like you need to do your best to try and retain that employee. Unless they do something completely egregious or unless you've tried and it's just not, not worked, you want to try and maintain it. It needs to be the same relationship with your marketing agency. We've done uh, several, we've worked with hundreds of junk removal businesses over the years. And we've worked in similar markets before. Similar, on our part, similar digital marketing strategies. And we've seen some guys do amazingly well, build a million dollar business in two years and just be off to the, the races. And we've seen some guys that barely make it or don't make it. The difference is the operator. So the digital marketing company can only be as good as the operator. 
So you as the operator, you got to get out yard signs. You got to get and do as many estimates and jobs as possible. Like get in front of customers. Don't be taking pictures because you're too lazy to get out and um, do quotes. You want a guaranteed job. Don't do that. that that's not the way you do it. So uh, do other advertising methods. Make sure the phone's getting answered. Know how to sell on the phone. Like do all that stuff really, really well. Teach your guys how to sell once they're on site. Be efficient, operate efficiently. You know, really look at routing and make sure that you're combining jobs where you can and you're saving money where you can on fuel and disposal fees. You're donating and recycling where you can, where it makes sense. Like those are the things as an operator you gotta do and then you're promoting hard. So that's the biggest difference between the guys that do it really well the guys that do average or go out go under the guys that do average or go under they're relying on the agency for everything they're not networking doing all the other stuff we talked about the guys that do amazingly well like they're on top of their shit and they're everywhere and they're trying to spend as much as they can on marketing once they've got a positive ROI like those are the guys that really 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 do well so it's the operator it's not the agency the agency can only be as good as the operator it's never going to be better so, and that's the max of the agency. You know, some agencies don't have an operator that's better than they are. So, like, that's when you would need to switch after you've made sure that they can't improve things. So, communication's huge. Taking ownership in your business is absolutely huge. The agency plays a big part in it. The agency needs to have your best interests at heart. They need to create a website that really speaks to your brand. They need to make sure it convert converts. They need a test to make sure it's converting. They need to keep the technical SEO stuff going, site speed set up and doing well, going through search terms on Google ads, try a new ad copy for higher click-through rates, changing the landing pages around for higher conversion rates, uh, making sure you're staying verified where you need to be verified. like. Those are the things they need to do, and, and they're not going to be perfect. Nobody's going to be perfect on it, but consistently they need to be working on stuff and tweaking and making changes and communicating as necessary. That's that's on them. That's what they need to be doing. And it goes the other way. You communicate, and if you're a little upset with them, let them know. The other part of it is digital marketing agencies set up where they charge generally a monthly rate, and the results don't necessarily matter. And as a business owner, uh, when I owned a business, I thought before, is it man, it'd be great. And even as a marketing agency, we used to say, hey, it'd be great if we could get a results-oriented um, pricing model for our marketing agency. But what happens is all the work gets put in, and sometimes the results are months later before it actually picks up. So the only way it would work for an agency to do a performance-based approach is when things are bad, you don't charge or whatever, it's a lot less. But when things are good, it's much, much higher. So most business owners will not want to, they'll forget, you know, the three months that the agency did a lot of work for nothing when things start going well and all of a sudden you're having to pay the agency a lot, what's well, more than the market rate or the regular monthly rate for another agency. So if you're, it, it, you as the business owner and us as junk removal business owners, like if we're not willing to reward the agency for the really good stuff during the good times, we can't expect them on the bad times to um, not price, you know, not, not, not price at all. So if there's junk removal business owners out there, if there would be enough of them, where that would work, like that'd be a model I'd want to do. I just don't think there's enough home service businesses that would do it for a long enough period of time to make it work, you know, to, to make it worth it. So what you got to do is you just got to make sure the agency has your best interests at heart. They know what they're doing. They're making good changes. And that's a risk you take when you sign a marketing agency. Uh, a lot of it's outside the market is outside of the marketing agency's control too. So ultimately your ROI has to do with cost per conversion, but it also has to do with your closing rate on the phone. And we see a lot of guys that are not good at closing on the phone. It also has to do with how good you guys are on quoting on job sites. We see too many guys with too low pricing and too low of average job sale to really have a high ROI. 
Sometimes you gotta have difficult conversations in business. But if you have conversations more often before stuff really brews, it's much easier to have. So go ahead and take care of them. If you got something on your mind, don't necessarily hold back. Be polite, be professional about it, communicate. This goes with anybody, your agency, your employees, spouse, whoever, like bring it up. And, and I, I've struggled with that sometimes too. Sometimes I just wanna like hold it in, but go ahead and bring it up. Try and take emotion out of it best you can. We're talking about numbers here. Uh, with your business, it can be tough because your business is your life. We understand that. I've lived that for 12 years, 13 years now. You still live it. No matter how successful you get, the, you, you're always in the back of your mind, that, hey, this thing could come crashing down. Could come crashing down. You know, there's a possibility there. So, like, I've gone off and, you know, we've done a ton. I've been super, super successful. But I've never lost sight of the fact that, like, listen, this is your life because I live it every day with the businesses I own, especially truck bodies and junk removal authority and junk doctors. It's the same thing. Like, we got to stay on top because we can get knocked down and everything we built up, we could lose. I hope I've covered some expectations on, on marketing agencies. Normally, like I said, it's going to take 30 days to on ad, Google ads. Let's say Google ads, like to get it okay, maybe okay, maybe okay, like 30 days. For a few weeks, could be terrible. The next 30 days, so the first 60, it's like, all right, by the end of 60, all right, we're, we're feeling a little, probably hopefully a little bit better about this. By the end of 90, it's like, okay, now this is starting to feel pretty good. And then you can send, continue to monitor and make changes and adjust for the competitive landscape and new features that Google comes out with and uh, changing e economic landscape and all like that, like you've, you've got to keep up with it. So that's what we do. We want to communicate. We ask, uh, we, we just say, hey, you communicate with your agency. Don't jump ship on any agency too quickly. Approach it like a marriage, take time, you not you know, to research before you choose who you're gonna work with. And then once you've made that decision, stick with it a bit of time. Don't be jumping ship a month or two in because you're doing nobody good. There's a good chance whoever you go to next, they're also gonna have a learning curve of a couple months before you know it, you've wasted 90 days, 120, 180 days because you switched to agencies once or twice. You don't wanna do that. Let's be smart here. Everybody be real smart, be measured, no knee-jerk reactions. Make smart business decisions based on information. Try and take emotion out of it, and you guys are going to be successful. Hey, it's Lee Gobble, Junk Removal Authority. Head on over to junkra.com or junkremovaltruckforsale.com if you're looking for junk removal trucks. Uh, whatever we can do to help you, we're here. We want to see everybody succeed, and um, you know, just glad to be serving this junk removal space. We'll catch y'all soon.